Hi everyone, it's Neve here and working for the Scrap FX design team. Today we are making a really quick layout using um, creating graffiti backgrounds. This is a page in my Use It Up journal. You can see it's a bit scratchy with lots of paint on it. And I'm just going in with some gel medium and some old gel prints, some uh, transparent, not transparency, just trying to think, deli paper that I've scribbled over. All sorts of different little bits and pieces to add some texture into the background. Now, while I didn't really have an idea per se about what I was going to do on this page, I knew I wanted to have texture and I wanted to have lots of layers. And I wanted the layers to kind of be transparent so you could see the layers in the background. And it, the end piece really reminded me sort of of a graffitied wall where you can kind of see the posters in the background and bits have been scraped away um, and you can see what's in the what's happening. So I haven't kind of color, I haven't collaged the entire piece. I've just added in a few bits and pieces in different areas. Now I'm going in with some liquid acrylics and these are from Finnebear. And you can see that while it colours beautifully, it is very translucent. So you can see underneath, you can see that stamped image from ScrapFX, which is one of my favourite stamps. Um, you can see all the mark making in the background. You can see the paint that's been scrubbed on the page when it very um, first began. So once I've dried that layer, I'm going back in with another colour. I'm going in with a turquoise colour. And I'm going to rub off through this... Um, stencil so I get that impression um, it's called ghosting um, you've noticed I dried the layer below the reason for that is you want to have the layer below dry so you can actually remove the paint now I'm going in with a scrap FX foam stamp of this dot pattern to replicate the pattern of the um, stents that I did before. Now I don't tend to clean my stamps very much and you can see there when I stamped it out that my um, pink didn't turn out all that pink. I just took a wipe wipe to the top of my ink pad to wipe off some of the excess ink. So you don't really ruin your stamp pads. You can clean them off. So don't be too concerned if that happened. Now I'm going in with one of the masks from Scrap FX. This is um, Don't Waste One Moment. Uh, I really find it really hard to read this one, but I love the script of it. Um, basically, it's don't wait for one moment, live your life to the fullest. And I'm going in with a metallic um, fluid acrylic. So this is much more opaque than the fluid acrylics in the background, but uh, it has a beautiful metallic shine to it. And I just it helps add to the, the layers and their difference on the page. Because it is a mask, you're going to sort of see you're sponging around the edge. So just be aware of that. Um, you don't want to have really harsh lines you want to sort of blend it out a little bit so I'm going back in with some white just to deepen up some of the areas and to make it a little bit more obvious what the text is saying and you'll notice already when I peeled off that mask it had sort of a really graffiti type effect it looked like it sort of been scrolled onto a page so that's what I sort of wanted in the background so I'm just drying off that layer now too and then this is how I end up with my use it up pages because I just, any leftover paint I've got, I scrub into another page in my journal and that's sort of the start of another background for another day. So I was playing around, I knew I wanted to use some tissues and these are the new rice papers from Scrap FX and I am in love with these. They are so easy to use, they go so translucent. They've got a really great texture so you can add paints and colour pencils over the top which I'm really loving at the moment. And the other thing is unlike the other collage tissue that you saw me put down before, they've got really defined lines so you get a really sharp image on your page. So I knew I wanted this image on here somewhere and but I needed to ground her. I didn't know if I wanted to write down at the bottom of the page but she was a little bit short there so I wanted to put her up the page which meant I'm going to have to draw in some of the area. I decided I also wanted a little bit more darkness on the page so I went back in with the stamp again and some black to um, deepen that up and now I'm going in with some 
um, neon paints and this makes a difference to the page I don't know what it is about neon paints but they're magic if you don't have any I'd suggest you get them even if you're not a big neon fan they can just transform any page I, I can't even tell you how they do it you can see that yellows almost disappear but in the, in the actual page when you look at it you can still see the vibrancy even though the colors not really there anymore it's just the oddest thing but uh, they're just amazing um, you can see I've also overlaid the paint onto the masked image that I put on and you can still see it coming through. Uh, the reason for that is the neon paints are also translucent like the acrylic, uh, the liquid acrylics in the background. So they work really, really well together. You can see how translucent that image has got. Now I've put some matte medium over it. And I'm also putting on one of the quotes, life is tough darling but so are you. So I thought I'd just add it in together. Now when you dry it off it does go slightly cloudy again because obviously the paper isn't wet anymore. But you can still see the background which is what I really love and you get that build up of what's happening in the background and what's happening in the foreground. The, I love these images. I have done another one using one of these rice papers because they really remind me of the pop art sort of Roy Lichtenstein, Andy Warhol type um, images, so I, they really appeal to me. Just to ground my image, I'm just making a simple sort of shoulder shape. I've put in some Paper Artsy paint in a really pale colour and wiped most of it off, but the reason I've done that is to give a little bit of tooth to the image so I can colour over it. The rice paper's got a beautiful texture to it that catches colour pencil. I knew I wanted to do some colour pencil over the top of this. So I needed to give some tooth to the background as well so I could do that. If you didn't have that paint, you could certainly use maybe a clear gesso. It would work the same way. So I'm just starting off with some dark colours. I'm starting off with my dark purples. I tend to do my shading in purples, um, colours of purple. I don't know why, they just are colours... I don't use purple very often but for shading I do, they're the ones I sort of go to and then I'm going in with some pink. So it looks rather abstract and rather strong but it stands out from the background. However the colour pencils themselves are kind of translucent as well. While I'm colouring in you can still kind of see the background peeping through which is really important. It sort of ties a whole page together and gives those layers that you really want. So now I'm going in with the black pencil and sort of drawing in a simple shape for the clothes, I suppose, or her shoulders. I know they're not perfect, but they'll do. And just using contrasting colours. So I'm going in with the blues. I could probably use something, a colour from the background, but I wanted to have something opposite. And it kind of, I think I must have been looking at the other page because I saw the blues there. I thought, oh, I like that colour, so I borrowed those. So again, I'm going in with some lighter and darker shades just to give some shadows and finally I'm going in and doing her eyes and then I will do her hair oh and her lips I forgot about the lips so again just sort of going in with a lighter color first and then going back in with a darker color to put the shadows in and because you have got those large areas of shadow in the image anyway you really don't need to do much to add to this you could certainly do this with paint or with watercolours as well, um, it would work the same. Uh, I'd try watercolours actually, before I say that, with a sample piece first, because although you've sealed the paper with matte medium, you may find if it hasn't been sealed completely, the water colours may go into the fibre of the paper and spread somewhat, so just be, just be aware of that. So this is a close-up of the final page. You can see those beautiful layers in the background that give sort of a really graffiti style, that peeled paint, peeled poster thing. And I just really love the grungy nature of it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.